ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good today. So I'm here with the podcast. I want to come on and talk about the whole Gil King controversy. A lot of you guys have been asking me to hit on this topic. Well, if you don't know, everything went down yesterday on social media. And I've just been kind of watching how everything has played out. So what went down is that basically CBS, they released a clip of Gail King asking Lisa Leslie a question about Kobe Bryant. And she proceeds to bring up Kobe Bryant's old assault slash rape case from 2002, 2003. And she's asking Lisa Leslie about it. And this pissed a lot of people off, honey. I'm talking about everybody from Snoop Dogg to Lil Bootsy. Everybody was dragging her on social media yesterday and even this morning. I'm going to go ahead and play you guys a clip that went viral. I'm going to show you guys some of the responses and I'm going to come back and talk some more. Go ahead and check this out. It's been said that his legacy is complicated because of the sexual assault charge, which was dismissed in 2003, 2004. Is it complicated for you as a woman, as a WNBA player? It's not complicated for me at all. Even if there's a few times that we've been at a club at the same time, Kobe's not the kind of guy, never been like, you know, Lisa, go get that girl or tell her or send her this. Mm-hmm. I have other NBA friends that are like that. Mm-hmm. Kobe's, he, he was never like that. I just never see, have ever seen him being the kind of person that would be, do something to violate a woman or be aggressive in that way. I, that's just not the person that I know. But Lisa, you wouldn't see it though. As his friend, you wouldn't see it. And that's possible. Mm-hmm. I just, it's just, I just don't, I just don't believe that. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying things didn't yeah. happen. Mm-hmm. I just don't believe that things didn't happen with force. Gail King, why the fuck would you ask some shit like that? I don't give a fuck who friend it is. I don't give a fuck she can Obama, uh-oh. Why the fuck would you do something like that? Why would you do that to your people? You know what people are going through, right? Why would you ask a fucking question like that? Trying to tarnish somebody's image. You do that to your own black people. You say it. I'm finna fire your ass up. You say it, bro. People be talking, black people need to stop fucking trying to Hurt black people for success. It's all the reason you ask that fucking shit for to get your fucking numbers up. Give a fuck who you can to. Fucking Gail King. Goofy ass, nasty ass, disrespectful motherfucker asking uh, the great classy Lisa Leslie about accusations about the late great Kobe Bryant. What wait, 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 Lisa Leslie should have said to you, what about the accusations that you and Oprah been freaking off for the last 35 years, and Stedman is a beard for that. What about those actors? Let, let's talk about those accusations, Gail. Let's talk about those. Why do you even have a job? The only reason why you have a fucking job is because of Oprah Winfrey. But what about the accusations that you guys, you and Oprah, have been freaking off for 35 years? And then I would have followed that up with, why are you wearing Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs makeup on your grill? This ain't the motherfucking circus. Why you got motherfucking Snow White makeup on? You look doofy, Gail. Gail King. Out of pocket for that shit. Way out of pocket. What do you gain from that? I swear to God, we the worst. We the fucking worst. We expect more from you, Gail. Don't you hang out with Oprah? Why y'all attacking us? We your people. You ain't coming after fucking Harvey Weinstein asking them dumb ass questions. I get sick of y'all. I want to call you one. Is it okay if I call her one? Funky dog head bitch. How dare you try to tarnish my motherfucking homeboy's reputation, punk motherfucker. Respect the family and back off, bitch, before we come get you. 
All right, so you guys just saw the clip and what folks like Snoop Dogg and Lil Boosie had to say. Now, Gail King, you know, she was not ready for the backlash. She's very upset. So for the first time ever, she's taken to her Instagram Live and she basically released a close to four minute video explaining the topic, claiming that CBS threw under the bus and she's really upset, kind of distraught. I want you guys to go ahead and watch this and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. I've been up reading the comments about the interview I did with Lisa Leslie about Kobe Bryant. And I know that if I had only seen the clip that you saw, I'd be extremely angry with me too. I am mortified, I'm embarrassed, and I am very angry. Uh, unbeknownst to me, my network put up a clip from a very wide-ranging interview, um, totally taken out of context, and when you see it that way, it's very jarring. It's jarring to me. I didn't even know anything about it. I started getting calls. What the hell are you doing? Why did you say this? What is happening? I did not know what people are talking about. So I've been told or I've been advised to say nothing. Just let it go. People will drag you. People will troll you. It'll be over in a couple of days. But that's not good enough for me because I really want people to understand what happened here and, and how I'm feeling about it. I reached out to Lisa because I know that she's a longtime friend of Kobe's to talk about his legacy and their friendship. We had a really wide ranging interview, talked about many things, his career, his passion, his sense of humor, the way he was mentoring other people, how he was starting his next chapter. It was wide ranging. And yes, we talked about that court case because that court case has also come up. And I wanted to get Lisa's take on it as a friend who knew him well, what she thought, where that should stand. And I thought she, it was very powerful when she looked me in the eye as a member of the media to say it's time for the media to leave it alone and to back off. During the course of the interview, I asked follow-up questions because I wanted to make sure that her position and perspective were very clear. And at the end, when she said, it's time for to leave it alone, I, as I said, I thought that was powerful. And I insisted, I insisted that that part be in the interview because I thought that it put a nice button on that part of the conversation. Um, when the interview aired, we got a great reaction to it. Um, I talked to Lisa last night. I believe that Lisa was okay with the interview. And I felt really good about the interview, really good about the interview. So for the network to take the most uh, salacious part when taken out of context and put it up online for people who didn't see the whole interview is very upsetting to me. And that's something I'm going to have to deal with with them. Uh, and we will, there will be a very uh, intense discussion about that. I also want to say this, I have um, been with Kobe Bryant on many social occasions. Uh, he was very kind and very warm to me, and I felt that we had a friendly relationship. I too am mourning his loss, just like everybody else. I still am shocked by it. It's tragic and untimely, and the last thing I would want to do is disparage him at this particular time. And I, I, I hope people understand that. And that's why I'm taking this time to speak to you directly. I've never done one of these before. I didn't even, I, I've never done one of these before, but this was so important to me that I felt I had to say something. I don't want to sit up on a set and read a prepared remark. Uh, I wanted you to hear exactly where I'm coming from and how I'm feeling. And to let everybody know that no disrespect intended. And now I've got to go to work. Uh, I thank you for listening. All right, so you guys just saw what Gail King had to say. You know, and, and let me just say this. I did go and I watched the full interview. I think it's very unfair for anybody to watch a minute clip on Instagram and then use that to form your entire opinion. I went and I sought out the interview. And the way she's talking, she acted like there was just so much more context to this interview. The interview is only about five minutes. It's not like it's a 20, 30-minute interview. It's about a five-minute interview. But I think that Gail cannot handle the backlash because from what I saw in that interview, it shows her to be a messy person. But before I get on to the interview, let me say this. 
Now, as far as Snoop Dogg and Lil Bootsy, everybody's a everybody's allowed to have their opinion of the situation. I do not agree with Snoop Dogg, you know, low key threatening a woman. You know, people were pointing that out. I don't agree with that. And at the end of the day, of course, him and many black men are going to be vocal about this because they've been dragging Oprah and Gail for a while for how they keep, you know, putting black men on blast and Oprah doing the whole Russell Simmons documentary. A lot of people are mad about that. But some people have perceived this as a victory for Russell. Yeah. Uh, and, and Russell. This is not a victory for Russell, and I unequivocally say that I did not pull out because of Russell. This is not a victory lap for him. I cannot be silenced uh, by a Russell Simmons after all I've been through. And also, you know, I spent three years on trial trying to protect the girls at my school uh, who uh, had accused a dorm parent of sexual assault. Three years on trial and nobody believed them. But Oprah, it struck me as odd that someone would accuse you of not standing up for women and black women in particular. I know, it's ridiculous. To me, that is ridiculous and also ridiculous to think that I could be intimidated by Russell Simmons. And then recently, the other day, we posted on Instagram about Monique writing Oprah an open letter about her treatment of black men in the media. So now that we got that out the way, I don't agree with everything that Snoop said in the video, but I do agree with some of it, okay? Now, she claims that this was taken out of context and that basically CBS was wrong for putting out that salacious clip. But my thing is this, Miss King, you've been in the media game long enough to know that people go for salaciousness. People go for what's messy. And CBS and all these so-called legitimate news sources, they're no better than the blogs at this point. All professionalism and journalism has literally gone out the window. The mainstream, aka the mainstream media, is in competition with YouTubers, bloggers, Instagram influencers, and everything else. So, of course, for them to get people to come to their site and watch the interview, they got to put out the most salacious part of the interview. Gail King, you've been in the game long enough to know this, okay? But what bothers me is, yes, I watched the full interview. There were some nice things like her walking around Lisa Leslie's house and, you know, Lisa Leslie showing off her Kobe Bryant uh, jersey that's like framed and everything, you know, and then just her fond memories. And I just loved how Lisa Leslie really, you know, handled herself. Even when Gil King talked about, you know, Kobe's arrogance, she didn't try to downplay like, oh, no, he was never arrogant. She was like, yeah, he was arrogant on the court where it mattered. You know what I'm saying? When we're on the court, it's kill or be killed. This is a game. This is not about friendship and things like that. So I love how Lisa Leslie kept it real, you know, and I feel like the interview should have been more or less focused mainly on Lisa Leslie, you know, from that point, because Lisa Leslie and Cheryl Swoops and many other women that were the first batch of women to join the WNBA almost 20 years ago, they basically paved the way and made the WNBA what it is today. So, you know, much respect and my hats off to Lisa Leslie, you know, the thing that Gail is trying to do, she's trying to shift the blame. Because when I watch that interview, I watch Lisa be a good friend to Kobe. And when she starts to ask Lisa Leslie about the sexual assault, she could tell that Lisa was uncomfortable, but Lisa was able to just roll with the punches. Now, she's saying that she was just, you know, being a journalist and she was just asking a question. But when Lisa says that, I don't believe that that happened, you know what I'm saying? That's my friend. I don't see it happening that way. She's not saying that he couldn't have had sex or cheated. She's saying that she doesn't believe that her friend would have to rape somebody. And then in rebuttal, you hear Gail say, well, you wouldn't see that as his friend. And it's like, well, damn, is this her thoughts and opinions or is this yours, Gail? Y'all go ahead and check this out. He, he was never like that. I just never see, have ever seen him being the kind of person that would be do something to violate a woman or be aggressive in that way. I, that's just not the person that I know. But Lisa, you wouldn't see it though. As his friend, you wouldn't see it. And that's possible. Mm -hmm. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So then she follows it up by trying to be the good guy, but then still trying to slide in a shady question. You know, so she's trying to be good by saying, should the whole rape allegation be a part of his legacy or should the media let it go? So when she tries to put in that part about the media, then it's like, oh, well, I'm a good guy. I'm not really trying to pry. I'm not really trying to throw shade. But she is because why even bring that up in the first place? And I love Lisa Leslie's response. Check this out. Is it even a fair question to talk about it, considering he's no longer with us and that it was resolved? Or is it really part of his history? I think that the media should be more respectful 
um, at this time. It, it's like if you had questions about it, you've had many years to ask him that. I don't think it's something that we should keep hanging over his legacy. I mean, he went to it went to trial. Yeah, but the case is, it was dismissed because the victim in the case refused to testify. So it was dismissed. And I think that that's how we should leave it. All right, so you guys just saw that. Then another thing I noticed is that when Lisa says, but yeah, everything went to trial, Gail quickly slips in. Yes, it was dismissed because the victim refused to testify. So once again, planting seeds of dissension. So, I mean, at, at this point, Gail, you just need to stand in your shit. Stop trying to blame CBS. Stop trying to say they were just trying to be salacious and put the most salacious part out there. Because at the end of the day, you went in to do a job. And your job was to ask that question. I don't know if that's a question that you truly want to ask or if your executives at CBS told you to ask that question but either way that is a question that came out of your mouth so if you were really friends with him and you really respected his legacy and you weren't trying to start no mess then how about just not asking that question altogether how about not how about just keeping it on the positive stuff of Kobe Bryant and what Lisa was trying to show the world, which was, you know, her close relationship with Kobe. Why even try and slip that in there and now that you're catching backlash and heat now you're trying to play victim. At the end of the day, she's trying to say that it was taken out of context. But my thing is, why are you even asking Lisa Leslie anything about this? Granted, she's a woman, but she wasn't a, a NBA player. She played for the WNBA. She was not a teammate. So why even bring that up to her? And another thing, if you guys were not bold enough to ask Kobe Bryant these type of questions while he was here, so that way he could speak on it and defend himself or, or state what he needed to state about the situation, then to me, in my personal opinion, it's very distasteful and disrespectful to then try and use Lisa Leslie to slip that question in and then in turn basically forcing her to defend Kobe's character which is not her job so I thought it was very very sloppy I thought it was not needed and what's funny is that you have been friends with several men okay who are part of the CBS morning staff that have been outed fired and shamed for sexually harassing and abusing women okay let's not forget she was very close friends with charlie rose who was her anchor who was fired two years ago and several other people who have also been me too like harvey weinstein and you know and others so i find it funny that nobody is questioning you about the charlie rose situation you know in, in recent years i mean she got a few questions back when everything broke but he's back in the headlines again in 2020 because now like all the transcripts and everything else are leaking out from the court cases and I don't see people going to her you know what I'm saying to ask her questions I don't see her divulging any information about her co-worker so I don't see why she thought that that was appropriate to try to drag Lisa Leslie into something like that when Again, they were just friends. They weren't teammates. They were just simply friends. I think that Lisa Leslie, she really handled that interview really well. You know, she did a great job just, you know, rolling with the punches. But I think for Gail King to try and come off like she's the victim in all of this is just silly. You know, and I understand asking questions. I understand being a journalist and having to ask tough questions. But I think where people are having a lot of issues recently with Gail is the fact that they are the face of, you know, black media. And a lot of people, you know, look up to Oprah look up to Gail have a lot of respect for them and it seems like you know as of late they're constantly doing things to focus a negative light on the black community particularly black men and it's starting to bother a lot of people now if this was a white news anchor if this was like a white CBS person it wouldn't have stung as much we'd have been like you know what it's to be expected because the white media has been literally trying to tarnish Kobe Bryant's name from the time he died. It's like he wasn't even dead a whole 24 hours before they couldn't wait to start talking about his past mistakes and what happened and, you know, this Me Too era. Kobe just died. If you guys were that concerned about this girl who was allegedly raped almost 18, 19 years ago, then why did you guys not ask Kobe this recently? The man just died. This whole cloud with this whole rape allegation being attached to his legacy, that has been around for years now. So why was nobody in the media bold enough to ask him that while he was alive? Don't get about it. Don't get nuts once this man has died. That's what I don't respect. Keep the same energy. Had they been asking him this in life, I'd respect it more than you asking people who are not even teammates of his you know, questions about, you know, what he did. And like I said on my live stream, I don't believe he raped the girl, but I do feel like they did have sex. I do feel like he had sex with her and that he was unfaithful to his wife and that he cheated on Vanessa. I will always stand by that. 
But as far as raping her, I'm not buying that. Nobody's out here saying that Kobe Bryant's a perfect person, that he was without flaws, that he did not make any mistakes. But my thing is, when do we allow people, especially black people and black men, to grow and learn from their mistakes? Why are their mistakes always tied to them even as they get older. Why does that always have to follow their legacy? Then the same white male counterparts, they can do all types of crazy shit, ratchet shit when they're young, but that's not attached to their legacy. That is just really weird to me. I mean, even for instance, you know, the, the former first lady, Laura Bush, she killed one of her classmates in a car accident when she was a teenager. I don't think I ever, ever heard the media like bring that up to her, throw that in her face. They just looked at it as a tragic accident and moved on. Nobody's calling her murderer. But then in the same breath, you'll still have people going in on Brandy for the car accident that killed somebody, you know, back in the uh, early 2000s. Was 2006 the worst time for you when you were involved in the accident and the woman was killed? Was that the worst? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um... You never wake up thinking that. Today's the day. Today's the day that something like this w would happen. It's almost like when we as black folks make any type of mistakes, they're just held over our head indefinitely. And it's really, really sad that they that the media would not let this go, especially being that the case was dismissed. The woman refused to testify and everything else. Everybody else was able to move on. But somehow all of a sudden now the media can't move on from this alleged rape case and they keep bringing it up, even though this man just died not even a week and a half ago. And they could have brought this up well before his death, but they chose not to. That's because most of the mainstream media media are punks they don't have the same energy with these people face to face as they do once they're not here to defend themselves so anyways y'all let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment i want to know y'all's thoughts on this entire situation are you buying gail king's story that basically cbs threw her under the bus and she had no idea or do you feel like she's only speaking out because the backlash is so great and a lot of you know even a-listers are blasting her for that interview and then how do you guys feel about just everything in general with how a lot of black celebrities men and women you know anytime they make a mistake even if they've changed and they've just been on the straight and narrow for 10 15 years that mistake is always thrown in their face some way somehow so let me know your thoughts don't forget to hit the subscribe button make sure you thumbs up the video and last but not least make sure you hit the notification bell so that we can be down with the notification squad all right deuces